Hi everyone, it's Marie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering some of your questions about plastic pollution in the ocean. If this is the first time you are seeing me, hi, my name is Maria, I'm a marine biologist and I'm currently doing a PhD on the interaction between bacteria and plastic in the ocean. The only thing you have to take away from that is that I work in the topic of marine plastic pollution, so I know a little bit about the subject. And I also know that there's a lot of misinformation going around. I could spend one video answering each one of these questions individually, however, I'm going to try to be as concise as possible and still scientifically accurate. Let's start. Is it really as bad as we think? First thing, people seem to have different notions of how bad it is. Some people think it's really, really bad. Some people think it's not bad at all. I would say it's somewhere in the middle. So I guess some people probably got it right. Now, the truth is we are not entirely sure of how bad it is. We don't know because there's simply not enough research to let us reach conclusions about what is the actual impact of plastic pollution in the ocean. We do know that there are a lot of animals from a variety of species that are being affected by plastic pollution in the ocean. We know that there are those animals that die because they get entangled in plastic or because they ingest it and that causes them physical harm. There's also the question of whether additives are leached from the plastic into the tissue of the animals that ingest them. The plastic additives which are pretty much present in almost all plastic material are compounds that are added during the manufacturing process to increase the performance of the plastic. And we know that some of them are potentially very harmful. And there is this chance that they might migrate from the plastic particles to the tissues of the animals that ingest them. And now the question is whether, first of all, how harmful are these compounds and these substances? And the second is, what happens if another animal eats this animal? For instance, us. What if we eat a fish that ate microplastics? Are we now also ingesting all those additives that were previously in the plastic? There's research being done on this and there are some indications that that might be a possibility, but we, again, we cannot say anything for sure yet. But besides that, we still have a lot to learn about possible impacts of plastic in the ocean. But the truth is, we don't know how bad it is. Are there any studies on the impact of plastic below 3,000 meters deep? Uh, not really. We have found plastic in the deepest point of the ocean, which is the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point of the Mariana Trench. And we do know that there is plastic there as early as 1998, there were photographs of plastic debris in the Challenger Deep. It was also recently found that the sediments in the Challenger Deep are completely full, or not completely full, but have a reasonable amount of microplastics. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that there will be some kind of impact on the ecosystem, but we still don't know. Are there any marine species already killed because of plastic pollution? I'm assuming here that the person is asking whether there is a species that it has been extinct solely because of plastic pollution. To my knowledge, I don't think so. But there are a lot of marine species that are endangered or in risk of becoming extinct because of human activities. And plastic is just an additional pressure. So even though plastic will probably not be the sole reason for a species to go extinct, it's still not good. How does plastic pollution affect corals? We don't know much about this. We do know that there are some corals that consume plastics and this probably has some negative impact on the coral, but we don't know much about it. There was a study, however, I think in 2018 in where they studied 159 different coral reefs in the Indo-Pacific region, where they found that reefs that were more exposed to plastic pollution had higher chances of being colonized by pathogens like harmful bacteria, which is not great. Besides that, we don't really know much. There's definitely a need for more research on this topic and almost all the topics I've said because I, <laughs> most of my questions are, we don't know. Is it easy to get plastic out of the ocean? No. First off, the ocean is huge, not only in area, but in depth. 
So the amount, the, the, the area that you would have to be able to sample or to just reach is so vast that, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how long that would, would, would take. Secondly, there's practical issues that come with trying to do something like that. And this not only involves a lot of expertise, it involves a lot of time and it involves a lot of money. So no, it's not easy. What kind of interaction do bacteria have with plastics, specifically in the ocean? <sighs> this is my topic, so it's gonna be difficult for me to not ramble the whole day. I promise I'm gonna try. Okay. Plastic exists everywhere in the ocean. They are ubiquitous, which means they are everywhere. In one milliliter of seawater around this size of a little tube of this size and of surface water, you have one million bacteria. And a lot of these bacteria like to attach to stuff, to surfaces, and create something called biofilms. And usually biofilms start with the primary colonizers, which are the ones that arrive first, and usually they, these are specific types of bacteria. These bacteria produce something called EPS, which is an abbreviation for extracellular polymeric substances. The EPS is, let's say it in technical terms, a kind of a glue, okay, that allows the bacteria to glue themselves to the surface they are attaching to. Now, this starts happening immediately once something enters the ocean. And the more time it passes, the longer this biofilm develops. You have new bacteria then coming in, new species. You have, for instance, viruses, you have eukaryotes, for instance, diatoms. Then you start having maybe some, some dinoflagellates and some bigger predators, some animals at some point join in as well. And so the longer something is in the water, the thicker and more developed the biofilm that is attached to it will be. Plastic is no different from any other surface. If you put plastic into the water, after a while, not much of a while, you know, after one month it's completely covered already with this layer, this biofilm layer of bacteria and other stuff like eukaryotes, diatoms, whatnot. So this is the relationship between plastics and bacteria in the ocean. There's also other places where biofilms create, like your teeth. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> That's what we want, layers of bacteria on your teeth. Great. There are certain bacteria that simply like living attached to surfaces. It gives them a lot of benefits and I'm gonna stop now because otherwise I will not stop. Okay. Can bacteria degrade plastic? It seems like some of them can. Different bacteria can degrade different types of plastic. There's different types of plastic and what this means is that they have different molecular structures. Hence, it is not surprising that they will need different processes to be degraded. And it seems like bacteria, some bacteria produce what is necessary to degrade them. However, most studies on this have been done in the lab. And so we don't know if they do the same in the environment. Just because they are capable of degrading it in the lab doesn't necessarily mean they will do it in the environment. They might be, even if they are in the environment, they might have other ways and other means of obtaining energy and food and carbon sources that are not from the plastic. So just because they can doesn't mean they will do it in the ocean. It's not very surprising that bacteria can degrade plastic because plastic is, or the majority of it, is produced from fossil fuels. For instance, natural gas and oil, which are naturally occurring. And there are bacteria that have evolved the capacity of degrading oil, for instance, in the ocean. And because there are a lot of plastics that have the similar molecular structure as some of the components of oil, it's not surprising that they can also degrade some of the, those plastics. And the thing is, plastics are produced and more resistant to biodegradation, which means that they, are, they might be more difficult to degrade than naturally occurring oil in the ocean, for instance. How can bacteria degrade plastic? Through enzymes and any other compounds and processes that are necessary for enzymes to work. Enzymes are compounds that accelerate chemical processes and every living creature produces enzymes. We, for instance, produce enzymes in our stomach. For instance, we produce many more enzymes than the ones in our stomach, but we produce some in our stomach to help uh, break down our food to, well, 
keep us alive. The bacteria also do the same when they want to eat. They produce enzymes that will break down complex molecules into smaller molecules that they can then incorporate into the cell and use them as a carbon and energy source. And some bacteria produce enzymes that apparently are capable of degrading the plastic backbone, creating smaller chunks of that molecule that will can then be incorporated into the cell. Bacteria are awesome. What are the byproducts of biodegradation of plastic by bacteria in the ocean? We don't know. Which is worse, macro or microplastic? Well, microplastics are considered plastics that have a diameter below five millimeters. The reason why we have this distinction is simply because of the methods that the first people who started working with smaller plastics applied. They had nets that would separate plastics below five millimeters and they started calling it microplastics. So that's why we call them now microplastics. There's no biological or physical reason why we separate it in five millimeters. This to say that it's really hard to separate the impact of macro from microplastics. Obviously, um, there's the obvious things that we can that we can talk about. For instance, microplastics do have uh, higher chances of entangling animals, for instance, or causing harm to bigger animals that ingest them than if the big animal ingests smaller plastics. However, microplastics, because they are so small, they are more likely to be ingested by more organisms, by smaller organisms, and it can cause harm to them. What can people do? There's a wide range of things that require less effort to things that require a lot of effort that people can do. The first one, which is the one that anyone can do in their daily life, is avoid buying plastic if you can. If you go to the supermarket and you buy two oranges, you do not need a plastic bag to carry two oranges. You don't even need a plastic bag to carry four oranges. <laughs> Those little changes can make a very big difference if everyone does them. Buy responsibly, reduce your plastic consumption, try to minimize the, the, the buying of things that you don't need. Participate in the conversation, inform yourself, inform others. If you want to really get involved, try and get involved in beach cleanups. It's also an amazing opportunity to meet really cool people and start involving yourself maybe in activities around in your area and uh, outreach, trying to make people realize, talk about the problem. There's so many problems that need to be talked about. This is one of them. I've tried to be concise. I hope that you guys learned something from this and I, if you have any more questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer any more questions on this subject if you have some. If you like the video, you know, you know the thing, the like button thing if you want. And if you want to watch more marine slash marine biology related content, don't forget to subscribe. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.